Praise God. Once again, we want to welcome you to this, this evening service. Uh, thank you, worship team, uh, for worshiping uh, together with us. What, what was an awesome uh, heavenward worship. Praise God. I entitled this short message uh, this evening, The Greatest Treasure. Everybody say, The Greatest Treasure. The Greatest Treasure. You know, um, the, the theme for uh, this year and probably the coming year uh, for the church is taken from uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, uh, verse 13. Oh, sorry, all those online, we also want to welcome you. Okay? Um, I don't know, is there a breakdown somewhere? We have a. What, what's a breakdown? Okay. I don't know why there's a phone in front. The camera is also doing it. Okay, right. Okay. I got stuck. Facebook. Facebook became face truck. Okay. Right. Anyway, those online, we want to welcome you to our service. And, uh, you know, the, the theme for our year, this year, and probably also next year, is Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 13, probably through 16. Many of you know, right? Uh, the scripture tells us, just give me a yes, it says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, look at this. This is very interesting. Okay? How will they call on whom they have not believed? How will they believe on whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach if they are not sent? How lovely are the feet of those who bring their uh, good news of peace and the glad tidings of good things. And then verse 16 says, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Does that make sense? In line with our theme today, I entitle this short message, The Greatest Treasure. Everybody say, The Greatest Treasure. The next 20 minutes just before communion, just give me attention, please. I'd like you to turn with me to Matthew, the 6th chapter. Matthew, the 6th chapter. And we're going to read from verses 19 through 21. Our numbers in Malaysia is going up. I just read a news. I don't know how reliable the news is. Uh, including Johor and other states, they are suggesting to reintroduce MCO. I think Chris O is the one who sent the message. Chris, I don't know how reliable Chris O's message is. Is it reliable? Yeah, he said like this, but uh, what is really reliable in Malaysia, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> look at look what has happened to the money that was allocated for our vaccine. <laughs> now they have to take from our fund. Wilfred, did you any did you have any part to play in that? <laughs> Six billion plus another two billion. Where did the money go? Who is not speaking up? What is happening to this nation? Why the good people in this nation are keeping quiet? Why? When good people keep quiet, wickedness will prevail. Good people have to speak. They have to speak out. If they don't hear, then they have to do something in order to hear, let the government hear. The government has got no authority if the people don't elect them. Right? Now that's why this government is no authority. We need to pray that God will intervene. How many of you would say amen to this? Not uh, speaking negatively. Okay? Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 19 through 21. Do not lay up, do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither the moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure. Look at the last line. It's a question. It's a question only you can answer. For where your treasure is, where your treasure is, there is, there, there, is, uh, there your heart will also be. You know, in today's message, I like to speak about the three greatest treasure. The three greatest treasure port. Everybody say treasure port. 
How do you like when somebody says there's a treasure pod buried in your compound? You'll be excited. The first person who will go and dig in the middle of the night will be Wilfred himself. Cindy will be sound asleep. No, we like treasure pod. Now there are three, there are three greatest treasure pod, and I'm going to speak about. Number one, in line with our team. Number one, the treasure, the greatest treasure in heaven. Number one, the greatest treasure in heaven. Number two, the greatest treasure in hell. What has that got to do with me? Okay, we despise hell, right? Number three, the greatest treasure on earth. I repeat, the greatest treasure in heaven. Number two, the greatest treasure in hell. Number three, the greatest treasure on the face of the earth. What is the purpose of this message? You know, the scripture clearly tells us your heart is where your treasure is. Right or wrong? Right? Now this evening, I like to ask you this question. I like to ask you this question. Where would you like to lay your treasure so that your heart can be in the right place? Where would you like to lay your treasure that your heart will be found in the right place? Come on, somebody say man, please. Number one, the greatest treasure in heaven, what do you think is? The greatest treasure in heaven is a soul. Everybody say soul. Is a soul. The only thing that God values is a soul. Come on, somebody say man, please. I repeat, the greatest treasure in heaven is a soul. And the only thing that God values is a soul. Come on, are you here with me? You, you remember, I always tell people, don't look at people as people. You know, in relationship to soul winning, you need to look at people as souls. You know, souls that are going to eternity of darkness. Romans 3.23 tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When you look at some people, you wonder where they're going. They're so strong. They're so tough. They're so self-righteous. They think they're more righteous than heaven. But the, the truth of the matter is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Come on, somebody say amen, please. No matter how religious you are. And Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is, is, is death. Death. But the gift of God through Christ Jesus is eternal life. Why? Why does God really value soul? Three reasons. Three reasons. Now, before I give you the three reasons, friends, now, you and I need to know we are saved to save others. Do you know that? You are not just saved to get to heaven, but you are saved so that you can save others. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says what? For by grace, through faith, you are saved. It's not of yourself, but it's, it, and, uh, it's a gift of God, right? And not of good works that any should boast. Have you ever thought about verse 10? Have you ever thought about verse 10? Verse 10 tells us, for, look at the scripture on the screen. For you are his workmanship, you are the result of his handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works. Say good works. Come on, say good works. Good work, good work starts with the gospel. And it goes on to say, which God prepared beforehand while you were formed in your mother's womb, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Come on, somebody say man, please. Souls are precious to God. I'll give you three reasons, but I want you to know your position. You are saved not just to serve, but you are saved to save others. Come on, somebody say amen, please. And Jesus said in John 15 verse 16, Jesus said, he said this, he said, Jesus said, you did not choose me, that I chose you and appointed you that you should go forth and bear fruit. Are you here with me? I'm growing fruits in my garden. That's not the fruit. I'm also trying to manifest the ninth fruit of the Holy Spirit to my level best. 
Are, are you here with me? I'm not talking, Jesus is not talking about that fruit. He's talking about souls. That your fruit will last through eternity. Why do you need mangoes and durians in heaven? Why do you need the ninth form of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in heaven? You don't need them. Are you here with me? When God is with you and you are with him, you behold the one whom you see. Right or wrong? So the fruit that Jesus is speaking about is souls. Everybody says souls. You know, for you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go forth and bear fruit. Win souls. Everybody say win souls. Come on, everybody say win souls. That your fruit may remain. Some version will say remain through eternity. Okay? And whatever you ask my father in my name, that he may give it to you. Are you here with me? The only fruit that will last through eternity, the only fruit that will last through eternity is the souls that we bring to heaven. Are you here with me? I had a pleasant surprise before I tell you why souls are precious to God. I had a pleasant surprise uh, a week ago. Uh, a pastor called me and said, uh, we have identified you as Benedict Rajan. He knows me, Reverend Benedict Rajan. And uh, you know that somebody wants to talk to you. Okay? That guy has identified me, you know? And uh, he, he passed the phone, the pastor passed the phone to me from Kuala Lumpur. I had a pleasant surprise. My, my classmate in technical college, you know, my first week of salvation, I brought this guy to the church. I brought him and his girlfriend, naughty guy, you know. And, uh, you know, I, if he's naughty, I was also naughty, okay. And I brought him, we used to do a lot of naughty things together, you know, and brought him the first week of my salvation. And he got saved. And he and his wife, and he's got two lovely teenage children right now. And he, 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 he calls me and tells me, hey, you know what, I, I'm in this church, I'm serving, and thank you for bringing me to the church. I'm saved now, and I heard you're a pastor, and uh, he was very careful talking to me. <laughs> he called me Reverend. And he said, I want to keep in touch with you. You know, friends, this is the only fruit we can see in heaven. Are you fruit bearing? Are you fruit bearing? Now, why souls are important? Why are souls important, precious to God? Now, friends, listen to this. A soul was the only possession for which God was willing to send his only son. Does that make sense? You know, soul was the only possession for which God was willing to send his only son. If God has got such a high respect and regard for soul, what about us? John 3.16 tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, and whoever believes in him will not perish, will have everlasting life. That's number one. Nothing else is more precious to God except souls. When I saw his souls, you and I, if I'm the only person who will be saved, Jesus will still die on the cross. He will still die on the cross. Can somebody say amen, please? Number two, number two, um, sorry, can somebody come? Uh, where is Christine or any electronic guys? Can you come? E.T., I'm oh, sorry, uh, Athens, can you come? Okay, I got some interference in my Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, my tab. Don't know what's happening. Okay, number two, despite of the splendor. Come on, what's this happening? Just one minute, huh? Oh. How to preach without moving? Huh? <laughs> Say again. Every time, one more time. One more time. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, guys. You know, let me just, despite, look at me, despite of the splendor and the golden streets and beautiful mansion and gemstone foundation and pearly gates and the, and the, the, the path and the road paved with gold. The most valuable thing in heaven is a soul which God has chosen to love. 
Are you here with me? We, we talked about the, the beauty. We sang about the beauty of heaven. If you read Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, it, this describes the beauty of heaven. But all these things doesn't bring joy to God except the soul that is chose to love him. Are you here with me? Let me prove this. Let's look at Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Luke 15 and verse 10. Jesus said, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sin, one sinner who repents. Are you here with me? Nothing else, look at me church, nothing else brings rejoicing to the heart of God except one soul that would love him and accept him as his personal savior. Go back and read the Luke, the 15th chapter. There are three short stories, short parables, and every short parable in this Luke 15 tells us when the lost was found there was great rejoicing the lost was found the lost ship was found there was rejoicing in heaven the lost coin was found there was rejoicing in heaven and the lost son came back there was rejoicing in on the face of the earth are you here with me God rejoices over souls rather than all the beauty and the splendor and the majesty that's heaven is made out of them. Come on, let's give Jesus a glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. And one soul gets saved and he gets excited. And friends, number three, why souls are precious to God? You know, friends, look at me. This is the beauty of his love for us. It costs nothing for God to create the world, right? It costs nothing. Right. How many of you know God called things to be in existence? Right or wrong? He called them. Let there be light. Let there be this. Bard. Come on, look at me. Bard. It cost God his son to redeem the soul. Are you here with me? Come on. It cost his only begotten son to redeem the soul from sin. Are you here with me? Can somebody say man please? In the sight of God, that's how precious a soul is. You may be familiar with your neighbor. You may be familiar with the people that you're working with. You may be familiar with your loved ones. But as much as you're familiar, but God looks at each one of them to be precious souls that will love him and come to the redemption power of God. Hallelujah. It costs God nothing to create the world except to display his creative power. But it costs God, his son, his son, to bring forth redemption. Come on, somebody show them at least. That's why Isaiah 53 verse 5 tells us Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. The punishment of our peace was upon him. And by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Come on, somebody say amen, please. God paid an immeasurable, immeasurable high price for each soul. That's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, He has redeemed us from sin. He has redeemed us from sin through the forgiveness of our sin according to the manifold grace of God. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? Hebrew, the ninth chapter, verse 23, tells us, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Isn't that wonderful? That's why every soul is precious in the sight of God. That's the reason why, friends, that's the reason why we bring the broken, we bring the destitute, we bring those who have been rejected by the society, we bring them, we don't look at them as drug users, we don't look at them as people who are abused, we don't look at them as teenagers who are going through trauma, we don't look at them as a wastage, those in the mental renewal home, those in, in all our homes, we don't look at them, we look at them as precious souls, and that's how God values every soul that he has created. Come on, unless and until the church comes to a place where they begin to look at people as souls, the church will never become a soul-winning church. It'll be very comfortable with their Christian living. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say amen, please. Is that wonderful? Someone wrote this, and I like to read. 
The saddest day in heaven was the day Adam and Eve were separated from God by sin. Heaven cried. Heaven just cried. God sat back and he just cried. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the happiest day in heaven was the day when the Son of God was manifested on the cross and brought back man to the redemption plan of God. Come on, put your hands together and, and, and give Jesus the glory. It's, this is called the reconciliation plan of God. It's not just redemption as far as heaven is concerned. This is a ministry of reconciliation, man and woman finally have been reconciled with God the creator. Come on, somebody say man, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? Number two, the greatest treasure in hell. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Anyone? Um, Albert, what do you think the greatest treasure in hell is? Albert, can you hear me or not, Albert? What do you think? Somebody just give me a guess. What is the greatest treasure in hell? Hell is also a treasure part. Okay, the only way Satan can hurt God is by snatching a soul from the plan of God. So the greatest treasure in hell is a soul. He's a soul. Are you here with me? John 10.10 10 tells us the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. The assault of the demon is not going to take place in hell. The assault of the demon will take place in the individual's life on the face of the earth. He would come and steal their peace. He would come and steal their confidence. He would come and trick them into blessing them and trade their souls. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say, man, please. The pledge the devil took from this guy who passed away, Desmond. You know, he's a courtyard seller, many of you will know. The pledge that the devil took from him. When the devil made an agreement with him, he used to be a medium in the temple. He used to go into trance. You know, what's the pledge? You give me a soul and I will cause you to strike lottery. Amazingly, this guy made a lot of money from the lottery. But his soul was lost. And he would go through immense pain and all kinds of robbery, snatching of the enemy in his life. No peace in his life until Jesus came into his life. Desmond, what is this? Sibing, sibing. Until Jesus came into his life and he went through massive deliverance. When you pray for deliverance, his legs can become like iron, cannot move. You know, this guy will go into trance and put his hand into boiling oil. How many of you know sibing? Sibing. Koitiao soup. Okay, Pastor Boy knows because he always go and eats there. Because of him, the whole family came to know Jesus as their personal savior. Put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. And the hell is hungry, hungry for soul. And even so, friends, the church has to become hungry in redeeming them, redeeming them from the hands of the enemy. You know what Jesus said in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 13. You know, friends, I tell you, this is, this is the reality. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. You know, the gate to heaven is narrow because heaven is for prepared people. People who are willing to live for Jesus. People who are willing to bear the cross and pay the price. Can somebody say man, please? Where else hell is for callous people. Hell is for callous people. Whether you like it or not, people like to live a callous life. They like to mess up their life with lawlessness and quick gain. Are you here with me? And so Jesus said this. That's why Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Hell has got six lanes. Heaven only got one lane. 
Are you here with me? No, I'm just saying it's not in the scripture. <laughs> Don't try to imagine, please. When you go to Shanghai, Guangzhou, their roads are big. How many of you have been to Guangzhou? Wilfred, you haven't gone to Guangzhou? The roads are big, right? How many lanes? What are you doing? You're Facebooking or what? <laughs> huh? How many lanes? Six lanes. What? Five lanes. Six lanes. You only look at the buildings and the, I count. <laughs> Including the emergency is six lanes. Wide. Everything is wide. In Guangzhou, in Shanghai, in Beijing. I've been to these places. In Chengdu, the roads are huge, wide. And I think of those roads. That's how hell, the road to hell is. Heaven has got a single road. I call this the highway of holiness. Isaiah 35 verse 8. Yes, 35 verse 8. Are you here with me? So therefore, now friends, look at, hear this. Please, you must hear this. Every time a soul enters eternity, either Satan or God rejoices. If the soul goes to heaven, God and all his angels throw a party without, of course, wine, alcohol. If a soul winds up in hell, Satan and all the demons burn together with them. Are you here with me? You know, friends, when I read my scripture, hell is never meant for people. God never created hell for people. Hell is never meant for people. Hell, by definition, is a lake of fire. Hell, by definition, is a lake of burning sulfur, brimstone. Hell, by definition of the scripture, is filled with worms you know, that, will, that, that are fireproof. They're fireproof. Hell, by definition of the scripture, is a bottomless feed. Hell, by definition of the scripture, is a place of remorse, a place of regret, a place of sadness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. By the definition of the scripture, that's hell. That's hell. Are you here with me? And the scripture tells us, you know, in Revelation 20 and verse 20, Revelation 20 and verse 10. Now look at this. The devil who deceives them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Are you here with me? Hell is never meant for you and I. That's why we are called the firemans of soul. Everybody say firemen. You and I are the firemen. You're not just the fishers of man. You're not Christ's ambassador. You're not just end time harvester. But you're not, the, you're not only a soul winner, but you're called to be firemen of soul. Say firemen. That's right. Look at scripture. Let's look at the scripture. Jude chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And I'm coming to a close. One more. One more treasure pot. And Jude chapter 1, verse 22 and 23 says this. And uh, those watching online too. You know it says, And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them, say pulling them, out of fire. Say out of fire. You know friends, we are heaven bound. But there are more than half the world has not heard the gospel once. Less than 9% of the population of Malaysia are born again Christians. Okay? Are you here with me? And that means more than 90% of the congregation in Malaysia, sorry, people in Malaysia either have not heard the gospel or not responded to the gospel. They are not heaven bound, they are hell bound, they are fire bound. Pull them, pull them out of the fire means pull their soul from the hands of the enemy that their sins can be redeemed, that they can get connected with God and discover the plan of eternity for them. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. And that's your responsibility. Sadly, that's your responsibility. But many of us are ignorant 
of our responsibility because we are caught up with the cares of the world. We are caught up with the anxieties of the world. We are caught up with the worries of the world. We are caught up with the hustle and bustle of the world. Are you here with me? Can somebody say, man, please, you need to step out and start bringing your loved ones to the Lord. You need to step out and begin to bring people, your neighbors to the Lord. You need to step out and bring those colleagues that you know and work with them to the Lord. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. You know, friends, the greatest, sorry, number three, number three. Those at home, get ready for your communion. Those here, you already got a communion cup. Okay, all right. No need to open. Don't open now, please. You know, friends, number three, the greatest treasure on earth. Chayong, what do you think? Chayong, what do you think, Chayong? What is the greatest treasure on earth? That's right. Souls. Heaven is fighting with hell. And heaven is encouraging, working with us for the souls to get to heaven. Glory to God. I'll be so sad if any of your loved ones, you have been sitting in the church for so many years. I'll be so heartbroken. And I'll be very sad if any of your loved ones after so many years in the church, if they die without Jesus, and I tell you, I will be very sad. I will be very sad. I will tell myself, wasted, wasted, wasted. Are you here with me? Can somebody say amen, please? Come on, somebody shout amen, please. You know, friends, Pastor Boy and I have been trying to minister to this Mr. Tan. He is much, much richer than put all of us together. Much, much richer. Rich man. And over the last two years, Pastor Boy and I have been visiting this guy and have been instrumental in bringing healing, restoration to some relationship that he's battling in his life. And you know, friends, without giving you any details, last week I was... Disciple, mentoring a pastor. I usually do that out in the restaurant. And he walks up to me and said, Mr. Benedict, no point living. No point living. And I said, don't make any rash decision. Okay, I prayed for him. He said, I'm going to KL. I'll be back. And then I saw him again three days ago. I was discipling a pastor Thursday morning he walks up to me and said I've come back from Kel and I don't think I want to live anymore okay you know friends he has money to buy everything and anything under the sun I told him Mr. Tan if you end your life is a developer, no? If you jump from your own building, I tell you, you're going to go to hell. I told him, you're going to go to hell. You know what hell is like? It's a lake of fire. If you think you can end your life with regret, yes, go ahead. But you're going to re regret the rest of your life. You choose what you want to do. You just choose what you want to do. And I prayed for him. You know, and uh, next week, God's time. He won't die. <laughs> when people say they want to commit suicide, they won't die. <laughs> people want to die quietly, they die, okay? <laughs> they don't announce, okay? <laughs> Are you here with me? So the greatest treasure, next, next week we have a harvest. The greatest treasure on earth is a soul. That's why Jesus said, in Matthew 16 and verse 26, Jesus said, What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange of his soul? I got five more minutes. Okay, thank you, sir. The greatest gift that you can give to someone is God. The greatest gift that you can give God is someone else's soul. 
Number one, the greatest gift that you can give to someone is Jesus. And the greatest gift that you can give to God is the soul of someone. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Now, T.L. Osborne is a great evangelist, T.L. Osborne. And he said this. He passed away two years ago. And he said this. Jesus, look at, hear this place. If you did not hear anything else, just hear this. Jesus' passion drove him to the cross with no regret. Drove him. Now our passion must drive us to the loss. And someone said this. I like to read this. Okay, Hear this place. The only economic indicator of success or failure in heaven will be not the GDP, will be the souls you bring with you. Praise God. The jewels in your crown will be reward for the number of souls you help to save. That's why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 16, woe to me, terrible for me, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel, to preach the gospel. Are you here with me? John Knox is a revivalist. He hails from Scotland and he said this in the prime time of his life. This was his mission statement. Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Give me souls in Scotland or I die. I pray today as we come to the close of this message, both online and those who are sitting here, that you would intentionally ask God to give you a passion for souls. A passion for souls. Oh God, give me a passion for my loved ones. That's good enough. If I put all your loved ones together, we need another building to put, occupy them. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say amen, please. Give me a passion for them. And then give me boldness to speak to them. And give me the zeal to bring the gospel to them. And give me the fervency to pray for them. And I pray as I conclude this message, the Holy Spirit will give you an atmosphere of a conviction towards winning the loss. Can somebody say amen, please? Stand to your feet as the worship team comes. And I want you to prepare your communion right now. Can you unpack your communion? And hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. While well, you're unpacking this communion, and let me just ask you uh, to, to commune with God and ask the Lord, God, give me a passion. Give me a burden. Give me a prayer. Give me boldness, dear Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Come on, give me a call. God, yes, right. you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. And God, you're so in prayer intentionally we make a decision that we will not be negligent towards them intentionally we make a decision that we will not be negligent towards our neighbors 
intentionally we make a decision we will not be negligent towards the colleagues father give us the seal holy spirit we know you are the converter but you call us to be the preacher god help us to just let them know that you love them that will make a world of difference in their life come on ask the lord to just touch you today there's so many of us today and if we can just bring souls into the kingdom of God, there'll be so much of have joy in heaven that the joy will just overflow and fill your hearts and your family. Father, I just commit each one of them into your hands. We will bring treasures Amen. to heaven. We will reap the treasure on earth. Oh God, and we will cancel the treasure that's going to hell. Thank you, dear Father. In line with our theme, how will they hear? Open our mouth to speak to people. Jesus, tell them that Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. And I just pray for the loved ones right now. Let me pray. While we are praying, oh God, in the name of Jesus, there will be conviction in their hearts. They will be so mellowed down in their hearts. And they will be so softened in their heart that they will be open to the gospel, dear Father. That we will not preach in vain. Like David, Paul declared, woe to us if we don't preach the gospel. Terrible are we if you don't preach the gospel. Undone are we if you don't preach the gospel. Thank you, dear Father. God, you're so good. God, God that's you're right. so good. God, you're so good. And God, you're so good. Come on, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. And your bread in your hands, please. Thank you, Lord. I'll give you just one minute to just serve at home. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask God to bless this communion. Every time we come to the communion table, it is really an intimacy with Jesus. A loving Father and a sweet communion with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the cup that signifies your precious blood that you're willing to shed for one soul. Thank you for the bread that signifies your broken body that we can be restored. Thank you, dear Father. Bless this communion. Let it be an honor to you and a real blessing to each one of us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, we read from verses 23 onwards. <clears throat> the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks to the Father, he broke the bread and he gave to the disciples. And he said, this bread which is broken for you signifies my broken body. And Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. And friends, the Bible tells us in Psalms 107, verse 20, God assigned his word to heal us and to deliver us. Let's eat this bread as a healing bread. God, you're so good. God, you are so good. God, you're so good. God, you are so good. 
Come on, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. You're so good. Amen. To me. Come on, isn't God so good to us? Yes. Come on, isn't isn't that wonderful? Amen. During this pandemic, God has been really good. Likewise, then Jesus took the cup. And he gave to the disciples and he said, this cup symbolizes the new covenant that I made through my blood. The covenant of grace, the covenant of forgiveness, the covenant of preservation, protection. And Jesus said, as often as you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me until my second coming. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus through the forgiveness of our sin according to the manifold grace of God. Is that wonderful? Come on, is that wonderful? Let's drink this cup as a family. Come on, I want you to put your cup either in your pocket or put it down. You can take it back. Okay? If you want... I want you to lift up your hands to Jesus, please. He's such a wonderful God. Come on. As we celebrate His goodness, Lord, help us to extend His goodness. I'm going to ask Pastor Chris Lynn to come and lead us in worship and close us in prayer and send us with God's blessing.